So because I'm working on another project right now, uh, I was going to take the rest of the month off. But then Over the Moon came out a few weeks ago and no one else is gonna talk about it, so I probably should. So here's a one-up casual quickie for you, ladies. Or dudes and non-binary folks, I don't really discriminate. Alright, roll the title card. That was a bad joke, I'm sorry. Over the Moon is an American Chinese co-production written by Audrey Wells and directed by the legendary Glenn Kane. First of all, this movie looks pretty stunning. Compositions and use of color are great, and it's filled with all sorts of small details that will make any Chinese diaspora gush in excitement. The plot is solid too, although a bit predictable. It tells the story of a young girl named Fei Fei. Fei Fei's mom passed away when she was young, and now her dad is planning on remarrying. Unable to accept that, Fei Fei remembers the story told by her late mother, the story of the moon goddess Chang Er and her undying love. So she decides to head to the moon and find her, prove that she exists, and convince her dad that undying love exists. And before you complain that a 14-year-old kid can build a rocket, she's Asian, so it's probably based on a true story. In terms of American-made films about foreign cultures, I organized them into three categories. That's the Gordon Ramsay fried rice. The dish, the recipes, the ingredients are all authentic, but because the chef grew up outside the culture, you can still feel the foreign flourish. These are the films I love. They can usually capture the spirit of the culture, even if the general accuracy is questionable. Then there's the California Row foreign in terms of inspiration, but made mainly by and for the American people. These films aren't about the foreign cultural representations, but are love letters to foreign cinema, more often than not Shaw Brothers movies. And then there's the BBC Fried Rice. Hiya. Over the Moon is none of those. Being a Chinese-American co-production, it feels quite different. While most of its key creative staffs are white Americans, there are also a good deal of Chinese and Asian American creative personnel involved. The project was initiated by Pro Studio, the Chinese animation studio who co-produced this. So the core of the story is already Chinese. Asian American screenwriters Alice Wu and Jennifer Yi McDevitt were also involved in the writing process. So what we got is, dare I say, a beautiful collision of Chinese and American culture. Let's start with the Chinese side. Everything, big and small, is ridiculously accurate. From the dishes, to boomers dancing in the parks, to classrooms and school uniforms, to entire tourist town Fei Fei lives in, are all recognizably Chinese. The dialogue is top notch. Oh, Fei Fei, you've gotten so big! <laughs> oh, you're so skinny, hasn't anybody been feeding you? Yeah, the Chinese viewers among you are having a guttural reaction right now. That's because nearly every Chinese person heard that from their grandparents. But it's not something you know unless you are Chinese. It's not some major cultural cornerstone that we teach. It's a small shared experience. Just goes to show how much creative input was made by the two Asian American writers. That is what it means for a film to feel Chinese. In fact, it feels so Chinese, my Chinese friends were unimpressed. To them, this is how a Chinese film is supposed to be. It feels so natural, I had to remind them that this is an American film. They are speaking English. Huh. Did you know that's how it works? Mm -hmm. At the same time, this film also feels familiar to an American audience. The Moon Palace is an original design inspired by the cover of The Dark Side of the Moon and the paintings of Jean Miro. The setting of the tourist city is also ingenious this old rustic style city is what a lot of people think of when they think of China. Even though the vast majority of China doesn't look like this, by setting it in a tourist destination where the buildings are deliberately kept and built that way, the film not only stays authentic and realistic, but still appeals to American eyes without being a stereotype. Everything else from a talking dog comedic relief I'm basically indispensable to an annoying kid sidekick <laughs> The elements are familiar Hollywood tropes seen in many Hollywood films. Although, the one thing that feels really American is how Christmassy this movie feels. Yeah, Christmas. 
is about a kid who believes in magic. The kid runs away from home and tries to find Santa, or in this case, the Moon Goddess. Yeah, it's a Christmas movie, but the core message of family, of grief, of eternal love, are still Chinese, or rather, it's both. On this channel, I do a lot of line drawings. This is Chinese. This is not Chinese. That's Japanese, and that's the whole mirror in Versailles. And I have to say, it's kind of pointless at times. Who's to say the story of Kung Fu Panda isn't Chinese? What makes me the authority? Just because John Carpenter isn't Chinese, does that mean his love for Shaw Brothers movie is somehow different? Over the Moon may not be a groundbreaking movie, but it's special to me. Seeing two cultures come together, finding their commonalities, and tells a story that stays true to everyone involved is kind of beautiful. For this reason, I love this movie, and I want to see more. Will it affect you the same way it did to me? Well, you have to see the movie to find out. Even without all this context, it is still a solidly made movie that can stand on its own. So, go give it a watch and tell me what you think. I'll be waiting in the comment section.